Hello and welcome to this video on the levels of evidence in evidence-based practice. During this presentation, we will also briefly discuss the differences between quantitative and qualitative literature and secondary and primary resources. To begin, let's discuss what we mean when we say evidence. Evidence, at its most basic, is clinically relevant research. In other words, it's your case reports, your systematic reviews, your practice guidelines, your various types of studies and trials, and so on and so forth. Evidence is found in your research literature. This is what you are looking for when you perform a literature search in a research database like PubMed or CINAHL, or go to a data source like census.gov or cdc.gov. But let's look back at our quote. In evidence-based practice, you're not just looking for any clinical relevant research, you're looking for the best research evidence available. And to be the best, it has to have been conducted using sound methodology. In other words, not all evidence is created equal. There are different levels of evidence. To illustrate this concept, let's look at the pyramid of evidence. This pyramid is used to rank the levels of evidence based on their reliability and quality with the top point containing the highest level and the bottom rung containing the lowest. Different types of research studies make up the center of the pyramid. Case series and case reports are observational and require the least rigorous methodology, so they are the lowest level of evidence in research studies and also the most prevalent. Randomized controlled trials, on the other hand, require the most rigorous methodology to eliminate bias and are therefore the least prevalent study, but they have the highest level of evidence. These distinctive kinds of studies are examples of primary sources. They are the original research being conducted and reported in journal articles, reports, and theses. This is in contrast to systematic reviews, meta-analyses, and clinical practice guidelines, which are secondary sources. Systematic reviews collect and critically analyze multiple studies on a given subject. They are compilations of research from original or primary sources and are therefore not primary sources themselves. The reason systematic reviews sit at the top of the pyramid is because they follow rigorous methods when analyzing and assessing original research. In order for a review to be systematic, it must follow a predetermined protocol that is used to compile and provide a statistical analysis of all evidence available on a topic. The Cochrane Library Protocol is the most famous protocol used in creating systematic reviews, and it is considered the gold standard. If you come across a review from the Cochrane Library, or an article that states it used the Cochrane Protocol, you can be guaranteed you will be getting top-level evidence. It is important to recognize the difference between a systematic review and a simple literature review. As you search the literature, you will find many articles labeled simply as reviews or review of literature. Unlike systematic reviews, these reviews require no protocol when assessing the evidence. They also summarize literature according to the author's preference for the needs of their article, as opposed to systematically collecting all research conducted on a single topic. If a review is systematic or it is a meta-analysis, it will clearly be marked as one. It will state what it is, a systematic review, a rapid review, or a meta-analysis, and it will also clearly list the research methods used. A simple review will probably just be a summary on a topic, which can be valuable for someone looking for a quick summarization but because these simple reviews lack protocols, they are not to be used as strong evidence. When looking at research literature, it is important to be able to understand whether the research is qualitative or quantitative. Qualitative research is descriptive research. It is information expressed in words as opposed to numbers and is subjective because it deals with personal reactions, opinions, and viewpoints of the subjects involved in the study. Data for qualitative research can be collected via interviews or focus groups. Quantitative research consists of information expressed in numerical data, statistics, or percentages. It is purely objective. Quantitative research seeks a concrete, objective answer to a set hypothesis using statistical analysis of collected data. Lower levels of evidence are generally more likely to be qualitative. Editorials and expert opinions are subjective, and therefore qualitative. On the other hand, the study designs of randomized controlled trials and other advanced study types are quantitative because they depend on eliminating bias and subjectivity. Anything from case series to randomized controlled trials can be quantitative. So if you're searching the literature in CINAHL or PubMed, look to see if the article lists the type of study in the title itself, like in this example. 
I know this is a quantitative study because all randomized controlled trials are quantitative. Another place to find the article type in CINAHL is within the citation itself, under publication type. As you can see, this is a systematic review, so I know it's a high level of evidence. The publication type info on this entry is less helpful. It just says research. Now I can look under the subjects and the abstract. The subjects say that this is a prospective study with a crossover design. When I look at the abstract, there is a very clear statistical analysis listed, so I can tell this is a quantitative study. In conclusion, I'd like to quickly summarize what we covered during this presentation. First, we discussed the pyramid of evidence, which ranks evidence based on reliability and quality, with the top point being the highest level of evidence and the bottom rung being the lowest. The highest level of evidence is comprised of systematic reviews, meta-analyses, and clinical practice guidelines, all of which analyze evidence on a specific topic to determine its validity and possibly suggest changes in clinical practice. Randomized controlled trials are the highest quality original research, followed by cohort studies, case control studies, and case series and case reports. The absolute lowest level of evidence are editorials and expert opinions. Next, we discussed primary and secondary sources. Primary sources are original research articles and papers. Secondary sources are compilations of multiple studies or original research on a given topic. A randomized controlled trial is an example of a primary resource. A systematic review that analyzes numerous randomized controlled trials is an example of a secondary resource. Finally, we discussed qualitative versus quantitative research. The simplest explanation of the two is that qualitative research uses words and opinions and is subjective, while quantitative research uses numerical data and is objective. In closing, I'd like to leave you with one final thought. High levels of evidence, while always ideal, are not always available for every study. Depending on the subject, a randomized controlled trial might not be possible. Some studies by their nature do not permit the random assignment of participants. For example, you wouldn't recruit a cohort of pregnant women and then randomly assign members to smoke cigarettes to test the effect of nicotine on fetuses. That would be highly unethical. So the best case scenario may be a case study or a case series that looks over the charts of mothers or pregnant women who are smokers. If this is the best evidence that is available on a given subject, it's simply the best you'll be able to do. Finally, you may also encounter topics that just haven't been researched yet. With rare diseases or rare occurrences, you may have to rely on expert opinion or case studies. But once again, if low-level evidence is the only evidence available on a topic, it is still the best that is available. If you have any questions about anything discussed during this video or any other library resource or service, please feel free to contact me 